I'm chipper. I'm not queasy. That's a lie. I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know when I'll be back again. I learned a very valuable lesson today, and that's never mess with a pregnant woman's fries. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, what's going on? I'm Nate. And I'm Chelsea. It's my lovely pregnant wife. Um, <laughs> and today in this video, we're going to be uh, showing you a simple version of a really cool song, um, Leave It On A Jet Plane. And uh, this is something that we kind of want to do more of in the future, because mm -hmm. I've taught a lot, of, this past year, I've taught a lot of really intense songs that take a long time to get down and I want to just kind of take a turn because I know a lot of you out there just want to be able to sit down and play through some of your favorite songs simple version so that's what we want to do so let us know in the comments below what simple songs uh, do you just want to be able to learn quickly sit down and play on the guitar and we'll try to do some videos on there if they have a kind of mass appeal if we see the reoccurring things of people like I want to play the, this song we'll uh, try to get those out to you yeah so uh, this song I think it's great in two scenarios the first is if you're a beginner um, then this is a, a, a great one to have in your back pocket. And then uh, this is also for, say you're not a beginner, but you get a, a last minute request for a gig uh, and then you need a cover song that you can just throw together without much practice, mm -hmm. <laughs> then this is definitely a great one to have in your back pocket because it's it's only three chords. Yeah, and the, like I didn't realize it was three chords. I've played this song before and never having had played it at a cover gig with somebody I was touring with. They're like, you know the song? I was like, I've heard it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll get into this. Uh, Chelsea, what chords are in the song? All right, so the chords that are in this song, I'll say it first in the Nashville number system. If you're not familiar with that, we'll link a video up in the corner, one of our own videos, just explaining uh, what I mean by that. But in any key, the chords are the one, the four, and the five. So you can transpose that to whatever key is most comfortable for your voice. The original key is in G, right. and so that would be G, C, and D. I am a an alto uh, singer, and so I prefer the key of C, so then in my version it would be C, F, and G. Right. But as I said, you can transpose it to to whatever is most comfortable for your vocal range and we'll get into that more later because we're going to be playing it in C but we're going to teach it to in G here mm -hmm. all right so we'll teach it in the original key of G there are multiple ways you can play G uh, the G that's I'm that I'm most comfortable with is this one now if you you can also play it without the pinky and you put your ring finger on the high E string and that's more traditional, that's like more the John Denver. Yeah, yeah. but I just do this because it's more comfortable mm -hmm. for me, but it both both of them work. Also, uh, you can also do it this way if you prefer to use your second, third, and fourth fingers. So do whatever's comfortable for you. So that's G. The next chord is C. And I think that one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay, uh, now if you are like me and you use this G, then you could also use C add nine, because all you need to do is change these to your first and second fingers. So there are two ways to play C, and then the last one is D. I think most people just play it this way. Yep. <laughs> so there, there it is. Those are all the chords that you need to know for this song. Okay, now we... Um we we were talking about this earlier as far as like the tempo of the song and like the count off for it. you could think of it as being like one two three four but i prefer to think about it as think uh, the tempo being one two three four one two yeah three, so four. It, um it's but it's, it wouldn't be it'd be double time than what double I double time consider. from what she perceives it as but yeah. the reason i like it double time is because if you count one two three four every chord or most every chord in the progress, main progression that you use for the song gets one measure. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to keep track of that way. Yeah, so that is 121 beats per minute. Uh -huh. And actually, that I think that tempo goes really well with the original recording. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll go with 121 beats per minute. So if you start with G, I'm going to do this G just because I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, so you do that for one measure. One, two three, four, and then you'll switch to a C, 
You can do a C, add nine, or you can do right. a regular C. So starting with a G, you'll do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now you do that three times. You go back and forth from the G to the C three times. Oh. Each one gets one measure. And then at the end, you're gonna go to the five chord, which is D. And that one gets two measures. Right, and that's like 95% of the entire song? So pretty much the entire song, if you're in the key of G, it'll go G, C, G, C, G, C, D. If you're in another key, then you can think of it as numbers. So one, four, one, four, one, four, five. And that five uh, gets two measures, mm -hmm. except for at the end of each course, mm -hmm. right? It gets four measures. Yeah. At the end of each course. Yeah, so that's the only difference is at the end in the John Denver version, mm -hmm. yeah. he holds that five chord for double the amount of time when he gets to the end of the chorus. And that's the only change. Other than that, the whole song is the same. And if you're on, um, well, first of all, let me say this. If you're struggling to get these chords down smoothly, and if you haven't played through an entire song yet, this is a great opportunity to work on changing between chords smoothly. Mm -hmm. Just work on the individual chord shapes on their own first. Get them to where you can put them right on with no problem on their own. You know? And then once you can do that, then start just trying to switch between two chords. So just the G and the C. Then when you can do that, switch between the C and the D. C and the D, C and the D. And then the D and the G as well. And then start trying to string them together in time a little bit. And uh, show us what uh, strumming pattern uh, that you, you, you use a different strumming pattern on the performance that we're going to do than like mm -hmm. what's in the original song. So for the original song, you go down, down, up, down, down, up. So we go down, down, up, down, down, up. And that first down, I don't do a full strum. Right. It's just sort of the, like my, my bottom three. Yeah. So down, down, up. And that makes it really easy to just focus on getting your chord changes really smooth and being mm -hmm. able to play through the entire song because you have that main chord progression that if you can play through that, the only thing you have to think about is at mm -hmm. the end of the uh, courses when you have those extra two bars mm -hmm. of the five chord. Yeah, so remember that each chord, you hold that for one bar for the, the G and the C. So one bar is two down, down ups. Right, that's so a really good way to keep track of Down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Up. And that's I, I kind of separate it out into verse, verse like there's like a double verse at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then pre-chorus, right? Mm -hmm. And then the chorus, but it's the same progression throughout the entire thing. Yeah. All right. Now you'll see that in the performance that we do, I use a different strumming pattern. And the nice thing about making a song your own, especially if it's a simple song that has three chords, is there's more room to play around with it. So when I'm doing this with Nate, uh, in during the during the verses, I'll do single strums right. because you'll be carrying it with some finger picking. Um, so I'll just do that. Hmm. And I use the C add nine. Right. Theoretically, if I wasn't doing it in C. And then in the pre chorus, I would go. Down, 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 yeah. down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. And then for the chorus, I would do that same strumming pattern, but instead of it being muted like I did in the pre chorus, I would just do full strums. Down, 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 up, up, down. So that is a bit more a bit more of a complicated strumming pattern. Yeah, it's kind of more modern. So more I'm modern, not yeah. Not so if you are a, if you're a beginner or if you want to be a little bit more true to the original version, then go with the first strumming pattern that we mentioned. Now I'm an, I'm going to be playing fingerstyle uh, 
things throughout here. And uh, if you are into finger style, if you want to get into it, he's using like the standard basic like core folk uh, pattern, finger style pattern, same chords, everything. Uh, let me show that to you real quick. Okay, so if you have your G chord on, thumb on the low E string, index finger on the B string, and then you're gonna skip over to the D string with your thumb, and then your high E string with your middle finger. This is like super typical folk slash John Denver. And the only thing you really have to worry about is where your thumb goes from each chord. So if you're on your G, you're hitting your low E and D strings. When you move to your C chord, you go to your A string, and then you can uh, you can still hit your D string with your C chord. Do that work so. And you can alternate even more if you want, like I just did. But he keeps it pretty simple, like this. So that's what I'm doing on the courses of the song. Oh, sorry, I forgot D. D, same thing. D string and G string with your thumb, index finger and middle finger, and stay on the top two strings. And that's what I'm doing throughout the course. Um, for the verses and the pre course, I, I keep things a little more simple just to change them up. I, like on the verses, keep it super simple to make it a little more dynamic. And then for the pre-course, I end up doing um, just a rolling pattern. All I'm doing is rolling up, rolling back down, and then change, changing my thumb to the D string, and then index finger on the G. And then switching to a C chord, this C chord only with my index finger off, I just like the way that sounds. It's uh, like a C at nine again, but just the nine's a lot lower octave than the one Chelsea's, than this one up here. So, it's a nice sound. Yeah, it's pretty. It's more modern sounding too. A D. And then I, on the course, I get to the, the typical. You can use the typical chords if you want to, and that's like a kind of a crash course in what you can use uh, for finger style parts on the song. If you need help with finger style, um, I'm almost done filming a finger style course for the Guitar Fam site. So go to the Guitar Fam site and sign up uh, for details and updates for when that's going to be coming out. It's going to be fairly soon from when this video comes out, like within a month or two. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get into finger style, go sign up for that. Okay, um, let, we're going to play through this for you, and it's a little bit different than the John Denver version, but don't let that throw you off. Um, one thing that's very different is we're going to be playing the key of C. I'll grab my capo here in a second, but I'm still going to be using G major shapes. That way you can tell exactly what's going on. And um, depending on if you're singing with the song or not, put mess around with, with which fret you're going to put your capo on to suit your voice. Uh, let me grab my capo. Okay, so it's originally in G. But that did not suit Chelsea's voice, so she wanted it in the key of C. So instead of playing it in the key with a C major shapes, which you could do, what I did was I opted to move this G shape up until the root notes, right here, the lowest root note, reached a C. And that's on the eighth fret. So that ended up moving it up one, two, three, four, five frets. So I just put my capo on the fifth fret, and then I'm good to go. I can play in the key of C, but I still feel like I'm playing in the key of G. So it feels exactly like I'm playing along with the original recording. And you can do that to suit your voice. And if you want to play along with the original recording, just take your cable off and play in the key of G. So is there anything else we should uh, tell them about the song before we play it for them? No, let's get to it. Let's sing it. Okay, um, <laughs> before we do that, uh, if you haven't gone to the Guitar Fam website and created your complimentary account, do that. There are a lot of really cool courses free to go through there and a lot of really cool supportive people as mm -hmm. well to kind of cheer you on as you learn songs like this. And if you're struggling with any one particular thing in the guitar that you need some extra help with, book a personal private one-on-one -on -one lesson with me. The first one's complimentary, so there's no risk. Um, well, let's get into it. Okay. Oh, my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. I'm standing. 
standing here outside your door I hate to wake you up to say goodbye But the dawn is breaking, it's early morning The taxi's waiting, he's blowing his horn I'm ready, I'm so lonesome I So kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you'll never let me go Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane I don't know when I'll be back So many times I've let you down So many times I've played around I tell you now they don't mean a thing Every place I go I'll think of you Every song I sing I'll sing for you When I come back I'll wear your So kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you'll never let me go Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane I don't know when I'll be back again oh, Time, let me kiss you and close your eyes, and I'll be on my way. Dream about the days to come when I won't have to leave alone. About the times when I won't have to say. So kiss me and smile for me. Tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you'll never let me go Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane